Good morning and greetings, everyone. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I am so grateful that you're here. Welcome to the Daily Medicine Transmission. This is April 21st, 2022. Welcome back, everyone. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Hello to the Starseed Fellowship and those subscribing through Subscribestar. We had a very vibrant and um, in-depth conversation on Zoom for our Starseed Fellowship Wow. Um, we were together for multiple hours. Part of that is because I totally screwed up and posted the wrong time for the beginning. So there was um, a faction that came early, a faction that was planning on the time that I had accidentally posted. So it was a number of hours. And if you are a subscriber, but you weren't able to catch it, catch the, um, the live Zoom chat, the replay is posted for you if you want to take a look at that. So we, we covered a lot of territory um, all over the place you know, of certainly about how the full moon's been treating everyone and what's going on uh, for everybody personally and on their own journey. We got into uh, all kinds of subjects about uh, looking glass. We got into um, watching the water. We got into um, timelines and got into the magnetic shift, what it means. There was just, we covered a lot of territory, which is good because I think many of us are continuing to... um, you know, develop new, new perspectives, right? New perspectives are coming forward for a lot of us based on the continual um, interaction with the world around us. And that's a, that's a very Taurus type of theme, right? Um, The world around us, the environment, the uh, medium of our growth, the soil that we are embedded in, so to speak, is really the essence of Taurus. It represents um, stability, strength, fertility, patience, balance, strong heart, um, and, and the Schumann resonance of the planet is often associated with the throat chakra in terms of the same resonance, right? What is the frequency of the um, energy systems in the different parts of the body? Well, the Schumann resonance is seven point, roughly 7.83 hertz, and that is also the same harmonic that the throat chakra um, is naturally resonating with. So it's interesting that we would uh, associate something like this with our throat, but it is the mechanism in which we express ourselves is through our throat, through our voice, through um, you know what we say, what we sing, uh, you know, toning, chanting, um, all of these types of practices. We are embedded with a natural uh, capacity to um, utilize and harmonize with vibration. And we know that it's all about this, right? And that seems very vague when you're like, it's all about frequency, but it truly is, right? Magnetics, uh, light, sound, um, and magnetics are directly connected to um, electrical charge and the, uh, the properties of electricity and what that means. So We know it's all about frequency. And when we have a lot of Taurus, like we do right now, the sun is in Taurus, Mercury, Uranus, the north node of the moon is in Taurus. Our eclipse, partial solar eclipse on the 30th of this month, ending and beginning new eclipse cycles, also in Taurus, okay? So uh, this is very close to Uranus, by the way, within um, three to four degrees. So that's pretty conjunct as far as I can tell. This is the medium of our growth. This is the world around us and our relationship to it. So um, as we transition into talking about some of the solar weather today, just keep in mind the way that the sun and the cosmos have an interaction with uh, the world around us and the planet in which we are currently finding ourselves on and what it means to identify and harmonize with um, that which is around us. So these are all themes to keep in mind as we go through Taurus season in general, and especially because the next eclipse cycle, because of the position of the moon's nodes, um, are also going to be along the axis of Taurus. Taurus and Scorpio. This is about resources. This is about power. This is about, um, you know, the accumulation, production, and distribution of energy. Um, And in Taurus, it is inherent in life. That is what it represents, is the inherent fertility of the natural world. So lots of themes that are being brought in. But 
in terms of that. But our moon is in Capricorn today. And so I want to talk a little bit about time. That's something that has come up a lot in different conversations, just the nature of time. What is time? How are we going to um, change in relationship to time itself? Because it's not exactly the same as you move through the densities, right? Third density relationship with time is different than fourth, fifth, and I'm sure beyond. We can't even really, you know, let's just focus on getting to the fifth right now. Um, before we um, conceptualize moving on in terms of earth. But the relationship with time changes and it's changing now. And what I've experienced in the past, and I'm going to link something in the description box from our good friend Alex Collier. And I know I've been really um, thumping him. uh, I wouldn't say hard, but it's my personality Um, when I find something that really resonates with me, I will wear it to it's worn out. And I'm not suggesting that it will, um, my, my interest in this person's, uh, experiences and speaking and content will wear out, but it's when something really works for me, I make sure that I, um, get into every, every facet of that and utilize it as a resource as much as possible especially things like this. So I am going to post, it's just like a couple minutes of, of a question and answer, but he talks about timelines. He talks about in terms of the convergence of the timeline, which I've been talking about for a little bit now, um, in terms of the bifurcation, it's really coming into a convergence, not so much, uh, splitting apart necessarily the splitting. Um, as we talked about yesterday in the fellowship gathering, was a necessary part of um, understanding that there was a convergence even coming in terms of timelines. But one of the things he talked about is how we, um, because somebody asked, can you experience alternate timelines um, in your dream state? And it was a very, you know, strong yes, which I've also done as well. And I'm willing to bet that many of you have had this experience too. And and some of you know it, some of you don't realize that's what's happening, that you are experiencing the alternate timeline that's converging with the one one that we're on now, um, in order to, you know, in order to basically move, you know, move past the, the, the dark timeline, which was, you know, basically fascism forever and ever, uh, about how you can experience it in dream state, lucid states, right? I would even go so far as shamanic journeying, that type of um, experience where you can have the connection. And many, many of us are having this so strongly right now, um, especially with where Neptune in Pisces is. And we're connecting into um, a stacking in some ways of these experiences as time, it, we're, our relationship to time is, is changing and becoming much more... Uh, much more of the experience that you have in the fourth, right? In the fourth density, which is you're moving through time, right? As opposed to time being um, a limitation. So with the moon in Capricorn, the reason I'm talking about all of this is with the moon in Capricorn right now, remember that Capricorn is the unfolding of the, of the materium that we, that, that is life, right? It is the machinery of life and nature unfolding. So it's not like materialism goes away um, when you are shifting your dimensional or density perspective, your dimensional perspective. It just, the properties change and time is, uh, time and space really do make up the materium in a third density and a third dimensional perspective. But as this aspect is also changing for us, as we are transitioning, especially the planet is already in this transition where if we're plugged in and going along with her energetically, right? If we are focusing on that earth star chakra, um, if we are making a concerted effort to establish a real connection to the planet as a living being, however you do that for yourself, there is the relationship to time is changing. And as the moon moves through Capricorn these next day or so, I feel like that we'll have this oppor- the, the opportunity to connect into the stacking of alternate timelines and experiences, multiple dimensional experiences going to get really strong. Um, now the mundane type of read on a moon in Capricorn is is much more about getting down to business, getting down to brass tacks, getting very serious, right? Getting very goal oriented in your emotions, and that's all part of it as well. But I feel like time is about to um, is about to get a lot more 
it's about to get a lot more uh, of a theme here within each of us, right? And being able to connect into these experiences because they're folding over right now. Um, we're having a uh, simultaneous experience of multiple timelines, not just in our dreams and certainly in our dreams with the moon um, in Capricorn. And it's still, you know, we're still going through our first waning period. So it's still pretty bright. We haven't even gotten to a quarter moon yet. So it's still pretty bright and strong. And I think that we're, you know, with the Neptune Pisces connection here, many people are experiencing emotions that seem to be very powerful, um, that are, are, um, not even seeming to be connected to anything tangible in this particular experience that they're coming out of nowhere, or they're just continuing to be flushed out of our system. I assure you, this is part of this process that, um, part of the convergence means that we have to also let go and flush out all the aspects that we are not really going to be able to hold anymore. And time and, our relationship with time is changing. So when you hear um, the phrase time is an illusion, it's not so much that there isn't time or that time doesn't function in other densities. It absolutely does. But it's a sleight of hand, right? We are being misdirected around the re the nature of time um, as fourth and fifth density beings. Um, and even in a third density, right? It's a cycle. Um, and really it's more like... Um, a spiral unfolding and being in fourth density means that we can, uh, travel the pathway of that spiral without, um, moving through time and space as we understand it now. Anyway, I know I'm getting, I digress. I'm really getting into this, but it's coming out very strongly. So practicality wise, if you find yourself having these strange experience, these dreams, the, this, this sense of like, this is me, but this isn't, this isn't me. Um, and maybe it seems like past life, but I would, I would also, encourage you to consider that it's more of um, the relationship with time is changing. And with the moon in Capricorn, I feel like that this is um, potentially going to be brought forward even more. And as it moves through Capricorn, it'll eventually make a sextile connection to all of the Pisces energy. So Venus and then Jupiter, but especially Neptune. And at that point, it's going to get very close to Pluto. And so that's something to watch out for and what that means. You may be having emotional experiences um, right now that are more related to those other, um, positions in, in alternate timelines, in multidimensional realms, right? And, and they may be coming through here because that's part of the convergence. So, um, I was very inspired by this, this video. I'm going to link it in the description box below because it really, um, filled in a couple of the pieces that were still missing for me in terms of my experiences in this realm. I've definitely had, um, these types of overlaps um, in my dream state and the convergence and how important it is that we're aware of this um, so that we understand why it's happening. And again, that we don't get pulled into um, identifying with our emotions here in the moment, because then we're reinforcing probably the very same dynamic that um, would have kept us on that timeline in general. And I believe he, Alex says that too. So anyway, now that we're done with me waxing philosophic, um, I am going to bring up, well, first of all, here's the Aurora. This is a beautiful picture also linked in the description box below in terms of the gallery. You can find it. This is in Fairbanks, um, last night. So you're going to see that there are, um, we are getting, um, an uptick in weather, right? Solar weather. And we're going to look at all those things. But the first thing I want to look at and show to you is, um, we had a big 6.7, um, last night into this morning in Nicaragua. So there's actually a correlation and a connection between the coronal hole streams and the instances of larger earthquakes. And I'm still learning, you know, all of the uh, mechanisms of that. But one thing I will say is that, you know, the geomagnetic um, impact, right? The magnetosphere, as we can here, I'm going to show it to you um, where this particular thing is while I am talking to you about it. So here's Nicaragua, 6.7. Um, it was off the coast, so there wasn't um, a huge impact on land, but this is pretty significant. And as you can see, there's actually been quite a number of um, larger earthquakes around this ring of fire, but also on this side of it over here, um, Central America, South America, this kind of area. But there's just been a lot of earth, like higher earth um, magnitude earthquakes in the last two days. Um, you can see that 
that there are some down here by Antarctica as well. So my understanding is that the coronal hole stream and the solar wind coming through the coronal holes um, is, is directly related to the uptick in this uh, earthquake uh, type of activity. And even though it's been steady, one thing I will say here is that we have been here. I'll show you here. That's the Aurora. We have been experiencing, um, you know, coronal, you know, wind speed that has been for the most part, it hasn't been super low, but it hasn't been super high either. And so even as we look at these charts here, you can see the magnetosphere has been stable and calm, but you can see that there has been, it's on the edge, right? But the solar wind speed has been dropping and dropping and dropping. And you can see that here as well. It's dropped out um, and the temperature has dropped, but the density has started to um, increase. If you notice that just a tiny bit of an arc in this curve versus the, um, con, you know, the concave arc in the solar wind speed, but the density going up a little bit, and you can even see the geomagnetic effect starting to become more pronounced at this point. You can even see it on this, um, the KP index. So yeah, it's quiet, but it's starting to build and you can, and we had been a coronal hole stream, right? There are no coronal holes apparently that are facing us right now, but we are coming out of that stream. And so it's had an impact for sure. And um, the other thing that's been happening um, is that the sun has been flaring. And we're going to take a look at that too real quick. Um, so even here you can see that right? The sun has been flaring. There's this big, you know, you can see it here, this huge sunspot complex that is now coming into view of the earth. And it's been flaring, um, since yesterday a ton, but they're not very big. They're not really, you know, ejecting any type of plasma. They are just kind of eruptions. They're strong eruptions and they are causing radio blackouts as we're going to see. Um, uh, but so far there hasn't been a huge, um, mass ejection yet. Although when you do have these extra flares that uh, cause blackouts, shortwave radio blackouts, um, there is a strong likelihood that you're going to get a CME. So we're going to see if they, um, what the prediction is for that um, coming up. But the Schumann is pretty, here, let me show you the rest of the information. The Schumann is, is fairly calm right now. Um, and you can see here, right, the KP index, it's, it's quiet, it's quiet, it's steady, but it's quiet. And here too, no real strong coronal holes that are facing us. So we just came out of a coronal hole stream, a strong one that had been going on for days, really. The Schumann had been amplifying and amplifying pretty consistently, like a heartbeat over um, the last couple of days. And then we finally get this increase in uh, seismic activity with a very large release, um, off the coast of Nicaragua. So, um, we'll have to see what keeps happening with these, um, solar flares, but even this, you can see here as I, right, here's the X-ray, the X, it said it was pretty close, 9.6. Um, and so, but it didn't really seem to eject too much. So, but it also did cause that shortwave radio blackout, which I think we can see here if we go down a little bit, right? The purple area here that shows you where um, long wave radiation, long wave radiation had an impact. So, um, and the auroras are beautiful. So there's definitely particles streaming in that are causing auroras right now. So let's look at the astrology. And, uh, see what this, uh, moon in Capricorn has for us today. So again, time, just remember that Capricorn is the, is evolving life. It is the pattern of it in its unfolding. It is Cardinal earth. That is the element that Capricorn is related to ultimately a feminine sign. So, you know, Saturn as the ruler of Capricorn, right? This is the cosmic time clock. This is the limitation of time and space, at least in this dimension. Um, and what all of these, you know, one of the things we talked about yesterday is that once we kind of make this transition, which we're in the middle of now, and um, what that looks like is, is in terms of its actual, the, the point of transition, who knows what it'll be, right? Some people talk about the three days of darkness, what that means. We talked a lot about that yesterday, the uh, magnetic shift, right? The, the poles shifting, um, what that means and um, how that all plays into this. But 
I feel like a lot of these modalities like astrology, um, even things like tarot, any kind of mediumship, um, even a lot of even shamanic practices as the large, if, as the population as a whole moves to this density, these things are not going to be necessary anymore because we will be all able to access this realm for ourselves rather than the intermediary that has been through the reader, the intuitive, the shaman, right? The medium, all of these things, the astrologer. So it has a shelf life and I'm, I'm grateful for that. This is just the, this is just the way to get us there. Uh, but so who knows what all of these archetypal um, connections to the planets will even represent at that point. But in this dimension and in this third density realm where we're using astrology as a fourth dimensional map, you know, Saturn is the timepiece, right? Saturn is the boundary that we don't get around, right? That life in its unfolding and its evolution also follows um, a cycle of death and rebirth. And whether you feel like that's a trap or if that's a um, consistent regeneration of energy is, you know, part of your belief system. But Saturn, it's important to pay attention to where Saturn is as we talk about the moon in Capricorn, right? Because that's who rules Capricorn is Saturn. And Saturn is holding firm here in the collective consciousness, right? Of the bandwidth of society as a whole and really a set of elder um, roots in some ways, right? Ancestral elder roots that um, are keeping... Um, keeping us really situated in this place about where we've been and what we've learned from this situation and how that influences the, um, you know, the future generations, those who are now in the process of coming into alignment with um, the idealized or cosmic consciousness. This is uh, the Aquarian, the highest, you know, the best case scenario. That's what I'm trying to say of Aquarius. So Anyway, let's get into these moon transits. I'm feeling, um, you know, I'm feeling like there is, you know, looser boundaries around time right now. And so I feel like I'm also kind of jumping all over the place. So I apologize if this does seem like the threads are not fitting together. Um, they just might be making a different pattern than what we're all used to. But um, the first thing I want to point out for today is that the moon moved into Capricorn um, last night and pretty much look at this right on the dot. I didn't even plan that one degree and six uh, minutes that the sun and the moon are in a trine with each other in an earth trine, right? Moon in Capricorn, sun in Taurus. So the second degree of any sign represents the, um, the distilled contrast to the essence, right? That first degree represents the most distilled and pure representation of that symbol or that meaning or that archetype. And the second degree in every sign quite, you know, I mean, this is almost obvious at this point is that there is a contrast, right? That's the nature of Gemini. That's the nature of uh, polarity and polarization in this universe in general. This is how energy is created. It's through polarity and polarization um, or generated, not say created, generated is through the tension um, of, of this uh, relationship. So the second degree is always the contrast to the first. And so the sun and the moon are both at this one to two degree in their trine right away early this morning, late last night. And so we are tracking the sun and the moon because they represent the luminaries of who we are, how we feel on the inside, how we express ourselves on the outside. And in this earth trine, it's very grounded. It does feel like there's a, a lot more groundedness right at this moment. You know, the moon in Sagittarius, for all of the strength and optimism we're drawing upon, it also comes with um, all of the friction that creates the fire in the first place. And so you may have found some um, sense of anger or a sense of responsibility really uh, welling up under underneath, right? That, you know, the, the magma under the surface really starting to bubble. You may have felt that too. And remember that this is still possibly these stacked, um, stacked experiences, past life experiences, um, convergence. And I think the Atlantis timeline is like one of the big convergence points, um, of, of where we've been and where we, um, it can be going and the fact that those two things are going to come together. And what's, I think really interesting is that it's the tension in that even polarized, um, experience of two alternative 
uh, timelines. It's even the tension in that that has pulled it together and created something even new. Oh, wow, that is really cool. That's just something that came to me right now. And uh, how much we are part of this process, right, in terms of being able to straddle or to bridge this gap. And I think he actually used those words in that. I, I don't remember. I don't want to take credit for other people saying things that inspire me and then say, oh, I said that. Because that's, you know, that's not how... I was trained as a researcher and academic, and you always cite your sources no matter what. So there is a sense of groundedness here, but there's also a sense of like, you know, um, for all of the stability and power that these two earth signs represent, there is always what you can lose and always what is out of our control, right? Something that ups, upsets the apple cart, so to speak, or upsets or comes in and, and completely turns things over. So it's like a, it's like a strike of lightning. And what is that other than the uh, atmosphere finding homeostasis because there is an imbalanced charge in um, the ions in our atmosphere? That's what lightning is, right? It's just electrons moving and creating electricity naturally. Um, and to remember, you know, within ourselves, what's happened before when these types of very drastic um, experiences, you know, pop out, right? We can't really always predict where the lightning is going to strike, but um, we, and we can be very disturbed by what happens, but we also can be um, very inspired and find ourselves nourished by the experience, right? The visitation is disturbing, but at the same time, it just created a whole space for something new to grow. And that's part of the natural world as well. But we do remember, I think on some level with this moon in Capricorn, what's at stake here? What happens when we waste the capital of our um, group um, in order to maintain power? That's something that I think is, you know, many of us already kind of felt into um, as we set the stage for this moon in Capricorn time. So like I said, that was late last night. And um, the, the now that Mars is in uh, Pisces, this is going to be kind of the beginning of this uh, relationship that the moon in Capricorn is going to have with all this Pisces energy, right? The um, the unfolding of the materium and then the the solvent of, of the, the spirit, even that is subject to to um, the return back to source, which Pisces ultimately represents. So there's a relationship there um, that's actually very harmonious and um, can allow us to uh, transmute something, right? Those sixes and the sextiles represent that um that harmonious activation, right? The, the sale of Solomon, right? The six pointed star, yada, yada, yada. Like, let's just look at it for what it is mathematically and what it represents. And so how the, how the cosmos is creating all of these, um, relationships, um, outside of our control or using them. So, this particular sextile with the moon in uh, Capricorn, five degrees, right? So the moon in Cap, let me make sure you guys can see this. Yes. The moon in Cap, um, five degrees of Capricorn. This is the war path, right? Now, this goes back to why this trine with the sun and the moon is so important so that we have a basis to remember, like, there is... Co there are consequences. There is um, a waste of resources when you get to the point where you have to, you feel like you need to defend them. And sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it's not. And this is the memory of that. It's the contrast to the power of the materium or um, of the fortress or the backbone or the scaffolding or the skeleton sy skeletal system, right? The roots all these Capricornian, um, you know, the, the bonds of atoms, right? Even those are um, able to be uh, pulled apart and dissolved as everything goes back to the source from which it came, which is a big part of what Pluto does. So five degrees of Capricorn is the war path, my friends. And again, this is first thing this morning already. You can feel it. And it's this generation of group energy, right? And what is it? Some people are rowing the canoe. Some people are doing a war dance. It's the idea of um, gathering your resources and uh, putting it, them together collectively to get to, um, to 
address this issue, right? To go and do something. And what's interesting, the sextile to Mars, which is, for all intents and purposes, the warrior, the masculine principle of the warrior, is um, giving every single, every single action, every single action has a, a spiritual significance, right? It is consecrated in some ways. It's sanctioned. Even the most mundane tasks, right, have a sacredness to it. And this is what Mars is acting on, every single thing. And so you have the war drums beating within you, right, in your own subconscious, in your own feelings, and making this sextile to Mars. You better believe that there is the war drums of the spiritual war that are starting to become much more, it's like listening to your own heartbeat in some ways, or feeling your heart uh, pounding in the blood in your own ears, right? There is something happening. And it's important to realize that just because things are a sextile or they're harmonious means that they're good. No, it just means that, that it's a harmonious connection with a lot of potential to um, come out of something. And so how we use this is really up to us. So knowing where Capricorn, knowing where Pisces are in your chart, knowing the pitfalls of Mars and Pisces, for instance, right? Getting really pulled into this martyr complex and like Joan of Arc type of thing, um, right? And I'm not suggesting that she, um, you you know, what she was doing. I have no comment necessarily on if it was the right or the wrong thing. It's more about the dynamic at play that is represented by Mars and Pisces, right? This, you know, spiritual warfare in a lot of ways. And we feel the, um, the, the drums beating, right? We can feel them within us. We can, um, hear the call. We might be doing the war dance. So just, just keep that in mind, um, as we look at this and the potential for this to, um, you know, be utilized very literally. So finding a way to utilize this spiritually or for our own process is really important. And I think that, again, there's a sense of groundedness um, that came with the moon and the sun in that earth trine before this happened. So beyond that, so the um, where I think we're going to be tested in this way is much later today when the moon comes into a square with Chiron in Aries, as we're going to see, and then comes into a trine pretty much right after with Uranus, right? Uranus, the planet of shock and awe and unexpected uh, developments. So, but also the square with Chiron and Aries, which is the wounded healer and our sense of victim versus savior. So the moon comes into a square with Chiron, right? So our feelings um, in terms of what we can do together, how we feel about, um, you know, the war, you know, the unfolding of life um, our sense of seriousness, a sense of getting down to business, what it takes, our ambition to get, you know, goal oriented can be very Capricorn because it's not about the feels in um, the emotions. It's about the unfolding of the, you know, life, right? There's no feelings involved necessarily. This is something that's been put into place through alchemical transmutation and is now unfolding as a pattern, right? As a fractal of reality. And so it's already on its way and has um, the the stability of atomic bonds, right? And so uh, what this suggests here, number one, this is opposite serious. So it's the idea that in its square to Chiron, just in general, that there is something to be said for what has been left behind. Um, and that there is a something that is dug up or something that has been unearthed that is ancient that is carved in something very strong and res um that will stand the test of time, right? That doesn't erode so easily. Um, that is a testament to something that has been left behind or a culture that has been left behind. Okay. And it's the ability to really, um, you know, the perspective, historical perspective of what's worth keeping and what has to be, you know, what we can get rid of, right? What is not relevant? What is not even stood up the test of time to survive even? This square to Chiron um, with the, the, the serpent that is coiled here um, within each of us, the potential of the creative source that comes from the polarization within ourselves um, is 
you know, we're getting pulled back into old stories about guilt around this, um, feeling ashamed, feeling like we can't do anything about this, that we are a victim, being afraid to use this energy, um, you know, being afraid of ourselves, um, not acknowledging that we are the source of our own creative potential as a result of being, um, you know, coming from the source directly, just like all life does. Um, and, and this square with the, the moon here is, um, I think what we're going to find here is, uh, if we can let go, if we can truly let go of what has happened, right? We leave some things in the past, right? There have been mistakes made, timelines that have, um, that were in place that were leading us to, um, the worst possible scenario we can imagine, um, that were put into place long, 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 long ago. Um, what is, what is worth keeping there? What is it that has not stood or withstood? Um, what is standing as a testament to those things? Um, and I think this is going to really trigger some things for people and, and probably deeply in a way that you don't even realize, but is now coming out in your feelings or in your subconscious, right? Or something just in your intuition and internal landscape. Um, and I think a lot of it is guilt, guilt and shame about how we have screwed this up before. Um, and that is, intentionally being used against us, I think, to keep us from, you know, actually, you know, um, being responsible for ourselves. Now the trine to Uranus at the, you know, pretty much right after it, um, well, actually, yes, very much right after it, but you can see that Uranus has moved into the next degree. Oh my, I didn't even pick up on this when I was doing my prep for today, but this is important because Uranus moving, um, this X, you know, this next degree is very noticeable. And we have gone from a, uh, degree, 14 degrees that had to do with simple joys, revitalization, returning back to this, at least not, not separating ourselves from the source of our own, um, self, but to remain close by, to return to that in order to nourish and revitalize ourselves. Now we're going to come into some real test. Uranus, 14 to 15 degrees of Taurus is, you know, you got to put that hat on pop that collar and face the storm. This is truly about character that is revealed under adversity. And with Uranus, it's going to be things we don't expect, right? And they're going to be having to do with, um, the higher harmonic, right? The, um, collective bandwidth and, and not being able to expect it. Usually a crisis, usually a very rapid change. Um, and the moon moving into conjunction with, fixed star Vega. This is a pretty, um, strong, I would say Lyran star seed activation as the moon comes into that connection with Lyra and, and trines Uranus, right? And what is this? What is our responsibility here? What is it that we are here to take care of? Is it just about us? I mean, it's really important to consider like how many generations into our future we want to be, um, intending and putting our own focus towards, right? Rather than just our own satisfaction right now of being right or somehow like reaching this kind of, um, climax of disclosure and all of those things are important. And I think that, um, it, you know, regardless of what you, tr you know, you personally believe how this is going to go about. I mean, the, I feel like Uranus at this point is really speaking to the fact that it is very much in the material world around us and the world of value to us that is going to go through massive change and upheaval. And in fact, with the North Node here, as we've talked about many times in, in conjunction with this Pleiadian area still is really about staying balanced and an open heart and a strong field in in, in the midst of this, right. In order for us to evolve. So, um, this is incredible. This moon trine Uranus, this earth trine and the moon in conjunction with Vega, right? Vega, that is a big part of the Lyran story, right? Whatever happened with Vega is directly related to not only us and humanoids on, in this galaxy and in, um, on this planet in particular, but also too through the whole, really through the whole universe because of the gateway, the stargate that Vega, the star is. So anyway, without getting too much into that, this trine is really about, it's going to be like now just 
tap into what this is all for. What is our responsibility, right? To take care of those who are impacted by the systems that we are responsible for creating, right? When we have a sense of that and we connect into our Lyran or Lyran, um, you know, family basically, because they are truly our progenitors as humanoids in the Milky Way galaxy. And they didn't, you know, they were brought here um, or they came here, right? So if you've ever watched Battle Star Galactica by any chance. Um, that is an interesting, that is an interesting perspective about this. Anyway, I don't want to ruin it all for you. You got to do, you got to get into it yourself if you're not familiar already. But, um, this is a really important trine because it's going to be tapping into what we're here to do, why we're here um, doing it. What is our responsibility to not just ourselves, but to those who will be impacted by what we put forward right now. This is going to give us the strength, the true Lyran like um, badassery that the Lyran star seeds represent to be able to face the adversity that Uranus is going to undoubtedly start stimulating at a very material and environmental level, whatever that means, down from the currency, food, the actual land masses themselves, right? There was just a big earthquake, right? 6.7. So just keep that in mind that there's a reason that we're here. And I think that this moon and cap is going to ground us into, you know, anchor us into why we are here. Um, and but it also will allow us, I think the boundaries are getting looser around time, around our relationship to time, our relationship to densities. And um, that veil is thinning every, you know, every day, really. So this moment right now is very important to, um, you know, to, re to really capitalize. And if there is a sign that has anything to do with capitalization as a very basic um a very basic experience, it's Capricorn, right? Capitalization, right? Where you not only are, um, you're taking the energy that has been generated and distributed by the eighth house in Scorpio and actually it's unfolding, right? It's been, it's activating life to evolve, right? So, uh, wow, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting day. And so I hope people are feeling okay that they're taking advantage of whatever opportunities are being presented to them to find their, their still a sense of solidity, a sense of rootedness, right? The Lyran star seeds, this is a great time to, to like uh, check in or establish a connection. Root chakra is a big part of the Lyran dynamic too. So earth star and root star or root chakra is great focal points for meditation or any kind of energy work today and prayer as well praying for not only your own, you know, spiritual insourcing, which is important, but acknowledging, um, that what we do is going to impact our future and always does. And I think that when we can, when we could go through our life that way, um, especially right now, it's going to give so much perspective on things that maybe feel very uncomfortable or don't even, or out of place emotionally and otherwise. So, I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you are interested in a reading or energy work to support your process, everything you need is in the description box below. There are going to be new moon reports coming out next week for the subscribers in the Starseed Fellowship. So those are forecast by sign and we're going to start the next eclipse cycle. So there's going to be a report that is going to be offered. I'm not sure exactly in what format yet, um, possibly through Brighteon. I, that, that might be an option. So people, People can just buy it. Um, obviously, it'll be available to subscribers. And then uh, a new reading sale for uh, the eclipse cycle from April up until November that um, I'll be putting promotional material out for very soon. So I love you guys. Have a great day. Please take very good care of yourselves. Take care of each other as best you can. And I'll see you tomorrow for our weekly astrology, well, the weekend astrology report. But we are going to talk about the week of the third quarter moving into the fourth quarter. So I uh, love you guys. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.